Hey guys, it is February now, which means we have four months, February, March, April, May, until your exams start. So, with four months for your exams, this is what you need to be doing. If you can hear any weird noises behind me doing this video, it is Prim um, chattering at the birds behind us, or out the window that way rather. She's, um, there are lots of birds because it's all snowy everywhere and they've got nowhere to sit, so they're all flying around in the sky and Prim's just yeah, chattering away at them. Anyway, four months to go before your exams. Start making lists of things that you know really well and lists of things that you don't know really well. Now there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can simply open up your textbook or the revision guide to the contents page and if you're allowed to draw in it because it's yours, then you can highlight stuff that you know really well and then highlight in a different colour or circle in like red, stuff that you don't know and stuff that you need to revise. To help you with this for science and maths, I've written you a free revision guide which you can download from our website and you can simply colour in the smiley faces. There's a column that says four to seven months before the exam. That's the one you should be filling in now. This is a really, really clear way for you to focus your revision and not always revise the same thing over and over again. Because I know that definitely I have the habit when I'm revising something or when I'm preparing something, I start at the beginning. And I know the beginning bit really, really well because I've done that several times. Then I get to the end bit and I've done it once and I'm kind of like, oh, we're winging this slightly. Anyway, do not always start at the beginning. Start with the bits that you don't know very well. And the first thing you need to do with these four months less is work out which bits you don't know very well. Work out how you like to revise best. We still have time. We don't need to start panic revising or panicking too much just yet. We still have a lot of time left before the exam. So do flashcards work for you? Do mind maps work for you? Past papers are a brilliant way to revise. Is that the way that works best for you? Try a few different things and see what suits you, see what feels happy, what you feel good doing. I, I know that may not sound great for a vision. Different things work for different subjects as well. History is really, really good for my maths. Maths, not so ma much. Maths, you just need to practice loads and loads. So work out which style of revision suits you best and then work out which subject that style of revision will suit. You might have to change things up a little bit. Past papers are a brilliant, brilliant thing for you to do. Workbooks are brilliant, brilliant things for you to do. It is getting as much practice in as possible. Getting a set of notes and highlighting them is not good revision because that is passive and I'm afraid you don't learn much like that. Work out what is going to keep you sane over the next few months. Um, I know that may sound like a slowly odd thing to say but the pressure is about to start ramping up. It is going to get really really hard, there are going to be tears, there's going to be shouting. It's an incredibly, incredibly stressful time coming up. So work out what keeps you sane. Whether it's reading a book or going for a run or sitting down having a cup of tea, watching Hollyoaks, try and work out what it is and prioritise it. Make time for that every single day. It is just as important as revision. We want you to be a happy, healthy person at the end of the exams, both mentally happy and physically happy. So please, Work out what is good for your mental health and make it a priority every single day. If you need extra help, now is the time to do it. Um, I tutor and about April, May time, I get flooded with requests and no, sorry, don't have any space left. So if you need a tutor or you feel the tutor will give you a boost, try and sort one out now. And the same with textbooks. You don't want to have to decide you need a textbook and then order it and it's out of stock. If you need a textbook, go and buy it now. Have a look at the structure of the exam so that you start to get familiar with it. Is there a big chunk like in biology A-level, which is an essay writing skill? Or is there a big chunk in physics 30% of the GCSE is maths. You need to make sure that you've got the skills in place to succeed in your exams. And this isn't just about knowing the content, it's about having the skills to apply the content in an exam. And then lastly, start going back over lessons that you've missed. Was there a week in year nine when you took a cheeky little holiday? Because 
well it was nice and warm and here it's freezing cold so to be honest a cheeky little holiday sounds really good at the moment or did you have to have some time off of school for medical reasons or did you miss a few days because well you just weren't feeling like it those lessons that you missed are really, really important. We don't know what's going to come as a big question in the exam. It might only be a paragraph in the textbook, but it might be worth 10 marks in an exam, and you might have missed that lesson. So use this time where we've still got a bit of time where we can relax before the exams properly start kicking in to go back and work out what you've missed. Don't forget, I'm going to be here with you every single step of the way. I'm going to do three months for your exam, two months for your exam, half term I'm going to do the year 10, year 11, do year 12, do year 13 videos to give you much more specific advice. I'm producing videos as quickly as I can for you, workbooks, practice papers as quickly as I can for you guys. So I'm going to be here with you the whole time. We can do this.